All right, y'all. So in this one, David Yu is actually going to reveal some very telling things when it comes down to their approach towards the Omi token and their focus. And honestly, this shouldn't be accidental. It should be very intentional that he speaks to the community and really explains these things, explains what they're doing, explain that this week we've been watching this, we've been seeing that, this is how closely we're doing this. It should be very clear that the team is still working on the token and it should not be something that's some big secret until you have something. There is a way, like I would think they went from revealing too much to revealing nothing at all ever. Even when they reveal things, nothing is revealed. And that's the issue with this company. They can say things and give updates without saying too much. You can actually say something. Let us know, yeah, we watched the crypto market this week. We've seen a few things that's popped up and that's made us decide to make a few changes when it comes to how we're gonna approach the OMI token. We're still gonna be watching the markets and, and watching the SEC for the next uh, foreseeable future to make sure we really get this right with the OMI token. Just a few updates like that every now and again and everyone will be fine. But that's not really what happens here. That's not what takes place. What takes place is we get nothing we get fed BS or we like, it's it's a weird approach, but you all will see what I'm talking about. Let's just jump into it, y'all. Well, to, to start with, um, you, you, the the beauty about the Wave 3 industry is has a very low barrier, which you, you know, you talked about where if you have an existing business, how do you tap on that additional revenue if you wanted to? But based on uh, the assumption that there will be a mix type of uh, hybrid token and the digitalized NFT or collectibles, um, firstly, you need to separate them out. Um, uh, number one is, um, firstly, you can, and the digitalized NFT or collectibles, um, firstly, you need to separate them out. So he starts off, firstly, you need to separate, separate them out. So you need your NFTs separate from the token. You need to make sure it's a clear distinction that they're separated. Now he's gonna actually dive into this thinking because what VV did, what I feel like they did when they first came out is they just had this plan, they had this idea, it's all gonna to work together. So it was all just one entity. I think big steps for them is really having that separation, putting that, you know, putting that separation between everything that they're doing so they can make sure they're doing every single segment or every single category part of what they're doing properly, legally, and to buy the books and then have them all work together as if it's one unit, but really it's a bunch of separate things. I don't think they had that separation before. I think they just threw it was clumping everything together. It's like it's like a very horrible, horribly coded platform where like the whole page the whole entire platform is just a couple of pages of code. And if you if you're a coder, you know what that means. But it's like things should be separated. There should be a lot of separation. It should be clear and easy to read. Like everyone who, any programmer who looks at this should know what's going on. Like it should be designed well and categorized right. Not just everything just thrown in there and it's working. So yeah, it's like, that's a nightmare to try to work with. But anyway, that, that that's the best way that I'm understanding it. Um, uh, number one is the jurisdiction, how you've been treated is, uh... Uh, digital currency token possibly could be a security product in certain jurisdictions. So the first thing he comes up, like you can see what's at the top of his mind. This is the issues that immediately comes to his mind, like the jurisdictional issues and how they don't know what's coming and, and, and which jurisdictions is coming in. And I think they're playing it very safe. I really still believe they're playing it very safe. So, Finding the jurisdiction regulation is your number one most important part if you were going to issue a to token as a equity, e equity raising. Um, then advancing from that in the and I don't think that they knew that when they were when they were doing what they were doing. I don't think I think this is stuff that they learned after the fact. And yeah, they're trying to do things by the book now that they're edu more educated on what they're doing. The collectible or minting a licensed product that you have rights for is slightly very different. Um, obviously, it, based in the US, how we test if, if the product has that ut 
utility apart from speculating or you buying it to grow as an investment is how we test if if the product has that ut- utility apart from speculating or you buying it to grow as an investment you 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 fall under as a digital collectible and how you market this product and how you hype it up we we have seen in the past month um, the SEC have talked about how you market and wording around that offering that you releasing so it is very important for anyone who's getting into this business to find the perfect structure so essentially like as you can hear like you can hear every word that he's saying like bro like this is i feel like this is why this man looks stressed right now this is why he looks how he looks he's a freaking collector who wants to put cool shit inside of a vault bro like that's what he wants to do a digital vault like that's 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 who david you is and right now he's talking like he just spends all his time talking to lawyers and and crypto analysts and shit like that that's literally how he sounds right now he sounds like he's in meetings all the time that's over his head and not really not necessarily over his head as in he's un- incapable of understanding certain things but he sounds like he's just in rooms he don't even want to be in learning about stuff that he don't even want to learn but he has to if he's going to make his true passion come to life. So like everything he's talking about is really all this complexity. Like it's just stress. I see stress as he's speaking about this, bro. Like extreme levels of stress. Like we don't even know what the SEC is gonna do. You gotta be prepared for this. It's like, it's like they're trying to play chess and they don't, they're trying to play, it's not even chess. They're trying to play a game they don't know all the rules to yet. The rules are still being made as they're playing the game and they don't wanna step in the wrong place. And every step they're taking is the wrong place because it's no rules yet. So, and then the community is getting screwed over at the same time. Like, it's like, listen, I, I I feel like I can see the stressful situation they're in and how tough it is, bro. But I feel like they're still mismanaging things very, very poorly. Like there's ways to communicate things that's difficult to communicate. You need someone better at communication at Ecomi. That's the issue. But anyway, I digress. Let's get back to what he's saying. Wording around that offering that you releasing. So it is very important for anyone who's getting... So they've been watching the SEC and they've seen, they're seeing them cracking down on the way people are wording things. So now they're they're watching how people are wording things. Um, now VV is even focused. And, like, so it's a lot of, it's a lot of, they put a lot of effort into trying to do things the right way is what it appears to be. Getting into this business to find the perfect structure um, very, very often that uh, startups or founders or project wants to get going, they don't think about it. They just think, you know, I got this great idea. Sounds like he's talking from experience because we know that Vivi did the same thing. So he's talking from experience right now. He's giving game. Um, and let's go with it. But the truth is you're going to have pies and rubbish thrown in your face every day. I mean, my job almost is putting out fire every single day having things thrown to myself after a while you get used to it um and now our our part is i'm solving some of the mistakes that we have made over the years in the past i mean the if phoebe was to be and so <laughs> this, this, this is what this is like bro it sounds like he's literally telling everybody why he's been looking the way he looked bro it sounds like he's been in the fire this whole year bro it sounds like that's what it sounds like and then with this bid forex situation going on, like, listen, as much as I criticize VV, I do it out of love, bro. I do it out of love. I, 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 and then they keep making the same mistakes, which is mainly around communication. It's like I can't feel sorry. For, I, I feel sorry for you, part, partly, but you are choosing to have shit communicators there. You choose to only sit here and get close to people that that kiss y'all ass like you choose you have put yourself in this position you do the things that you do and it's led to where you currently are you surround yourself with the people who suck up to y'all when really you should be surrounded by the people constantly criticizing y'all because these people care enough to criticize and want change and it's not necessarily even just it's toxic criticism and then there's people who genuinely just always try to give vivi the the perspective that gives me the best chance at what they're trying to build out the best approach because you've tried oversharing you saw how that went you you're doing the silent thing 
and look at how it's costing people money when mistakes happen. The the teams are, are not accomplishing the things that they should be. Like you say you have a crypto department that's doing nothing. It's like, listen, at a certain point, something has to give or you're gonna y'all are gonna lose all credibility. And I don't even think that that's their intention. I just think that they too many mistakes. It's for too long and not enough gain or return anymore. It's the middle of the bull run. Everybody finna be making money around. VV has to do something again this year that's gonna make a lot of people a lot of money or these mistakes is not gonna be easily acceptable this year because everybody around VV is going to be making money except VV if something does not change or something does not happen with VV where you all find a way to put some money in people's pockets again this year. Nikomi is to be re, um, had the opportunity to be uh, restructure or restart again from 2017, I certainly will be doing it very, very much different. Um, how so? You need to have, will you um, tell me how um, so? Number one is... She asks great questions, by the way. The industry hasn't got very clear uh, from the very star. Um, and all, obviously, throughout the time... Gab I think, like, what I think is that they're scared to make mistakes, bro make mistakes you're a legitimate company you're trying to do it the right way and the space is unregulated right now take steps if you have to change something at least you took steps if you have to pay fines have fines ready have the fees ready to pay fine like prepare the company you could you could tell us that there's a risk to what you all are doing like you could tell the people that there's a risk but most of most of the people who still here would understand like if you have to make moves with the token, otherwise, like, nothing will come of it, but it could come under scrutiny in the future because it's not really clear what you're trying to do. It's like trying to make the perfect move, have y'all making all type of stupid moves and making y'all look stupid in the process. Like, that's the problem with trying to make the perfect move. There is no perfect move. Make a move and then deal with the results of that move as, the, as things come. Like, that's all you can really do. They're trying to be perfect, and they're not, like... It's certain mistakes you can't make. Like it's like some things, some things is, is is more in their control than they realize, and they are responsible. And then at least if they gonna play this game where they take forever to do everything because they want to do it perfectly, you can tell the community that we not gonna see results because y'all want to be soft. That's easy to do. Be like, oh, it's gonna take a while. We really want to wait until the SEC really figures this out. That it's really definitive. We're gonna take a while to to accomplish anything when it comes down to this. It could take some time. Like, boom. Then people are not constantly expecting things. People are not constantly fighting and arguing about, oh, you can just say the team said it's going to take a while. Like the SEC, stuff with the SEC. Then the community can start watching the SEC so we can see the things that you all are seeing. You know? It's ways to go about things in ways that doesn't cause the community to not trust you. Government's regulations come in, scrutinize the industry. Um, in, in a way... The NFT can often be treated as same as a token like cryptocurrencies. Sometimes they are not well educated, so they put that whole category of Web3 into one bucket and treat everything with a blanket rules over, which is, you know, unfortunate. It's very different. Um, they are very different. Uh so as you can see, like if you read between the lines of the stuff that he's saying, the NFT seems more complicated than he thought that they would be. The the token seems more complicated. Every single aspect of this company and what they're trying to build, because of the blurred lines and regulations, it seems a lot more complicated than I think that they were prepared to take on. I don't think that they were expecting this level of work, this level of attention to detail that they would need. And I don't think that they can watch everything by themselves. I don't think that they can do it all alone. They need people just scouring the internet for things that can go wrong with their partners and stuff like that. They need people who are, who just, they need someone's job to just continue to study and get knowledgeable about the space and what's really going on. You can watch regulations and all that stuff, but you have to, you, they just need more people. And then they need a communicator who can, who can say what's going on without breaking any rules or giving away too much and things like that. They need someone who can say something and, you know, get through to people. It's like, is yeah. This this company, this company just needs a lot. It needs a lot of work. I don't. I think they're in over their heads and they're trying to stay afloat mentally. Uh, number two is um, fundraising. Obviously, um, when when it comes to fundraising, is finding the right advisors and right your 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 board 
that will take this business to the next level. I mean, that is true. Like they started out, uh, they started out from a bad stance. It's a bad place from people that they have worked with. So, I mean, and what I just got from that is probably they, they got off, they started off behind and then they've been trying to keep up ever since. Even though they've seen some successes, they've never really got ahead. Like, it sounds like they're, stu they're stuck. He's really, like, this is why he looks the way he does right now. He's really stuck in all the mistakes that this company has made during this rise. And it's like they're trying to go back and correct everything, but they, they're they terrible at communicating this. And how long will it take to correct everything? How much stuff is wrong? Like, honestly, I think the best thing that they could do at this point is really acknowledge all the stuff that's wrong, make us understand why why things are taking so long, what all you got to fix and stuff like that. So that way people can be a lot more understanding. First off, acknowledging your mistakes, that that's growth, that, that, that gives trust. Acknowledging that you all didn't know what you thought you knew or some things is just new and unregulated. So you, you have to learn on the fly and pivot quick. It's like, bro, like if you can really explain that and, and, and say that in the right way and let the community know what's up, like, the loyalty will be back. The trust will be back. Like everything could go back to what it was, but it's like, they, they don't see the obvious that this, this secretive, like trying to do what other come like, nah, 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 nah. You can't, you can't, I, I see them compared all the time. Oh, no company like Amazon would ever come out and say all this. Like, this is what web three is about. Web three is about transparency. People being in control, the people, it's about the people. This entire space is about the people. The people want to know. And they started out knowing that. They started out telling the people everything. And yeah, it was a lot of memes, a lot of jokes, a lot of stuff backfired and things like that. But the community was the best it's ever been back when they were openly sharing everything. I think there's more speculation. Like, okay, we're, we're not always right with the speculation now, but that doesn't really matter because look at the community. The community has fallen to shit since they stopped communicating. I, I'd rather the over-communication than what's going on now but hey that's just me um it, this this is a new nascent industry there is a lot of um, unfortunate you you meet a lot of people who over promise you in your business uh, who advises you around things that's incorrect because it, it's multiple so basically they listen to a bunch of con artists and a bunch of people who don't know as much as they claim that they know and they they've told the community based off of that like but see when they get in bed with someone if they were the type to be able to communicate well and say we're working with this new pro partner we've been promised this so we're going to see how it goes it's our responsibility to get this to you within a certain amount of time we've been told this timeline but we have to make sure that the partner's going to hold up to their end so we're not going to guarantee you a timeline right now but just know that this is what we're doing this is the process and we're going to see what happens you communicate that, sauce that a little bit, boom, bro. People understand. People will understand. It's like they take the community as a bunch of freaking idiot futters, and that's created a community full of futters. It's like everything that they do is counterproductive, and they don't get it. People just want truth. People just want to understand. Because you went from being able to believe in this company wholeheartedly to now even your strongest supporters have certain levels of doubt. They just don't want to admit it. It's like... You're doing something wrong at the point where everyone is feeling, everyone's feeling it. Like everyone is feeling it. The job of a parent is to protect your kids from feeling the things that they don't need to feel. Why does everyone in your community feel it? It don't matter how much, how bullish someone say, have you seen Randy, bro? Like he's the most bullish. He's keeping his conviction and stuff like that. But that man be looking tired and stressed a lot. Like, come on now. Like even the most bullish people, bro, like, it doesn't matter. Everyone shouldn't be feeling it. Like, you can communicate in a way where people understand. Like, as a parent, you tell your kids bad news still, but you just tell it to them in a way where they know that mommy and daddy got this, you know? I wouldn't know nothing about daddy having it. I ain't never had that. Listen, I just take it all sad. Relax. <laughs> For moving part. So finding the right partner is is a very important otherwise you you become in a partnership with a ship that never sail you you constantly going around the circles and if understanding were, hmm. sorry it, it, so so just just on that if you were to go back 
and, and do this all over again. And because I really want to know this, and I want for people uh, who want to come in this space and follow. I don't think he should reveal this. I think with, with how much Vivi done screwed up, he finna give a competitor all the sauce they need to come smoke shit. Uh, your lead or Will's lead, would you tell them that tokens are actually needed for Web3 IPs or can you just sell NFTs? And and, and what, if, if tokens are needed, why are they needed? Because we, we have projects that are not using tokens and, and they're doing it and they're selling NFTs. So if you were to do hmm. this again, would you incorporate tokens? Um, I mean, where, where we are, we probably will think a bit deeper how to how how the whole ecosystem will connect <laughs> that this that, that this one right here looks crazy <laughs> the way he answered this looks crazy because it looked like he basically saying they don't need the omi token like <laughs> that's what i just took from this right now like yo these questions is wild but i like it i mean it is the stuff people want to know but yo hey he said he sound like he trying not to say nothing crazy because he know what the, the answer that this can implicate because well, I just instantly heard that they don't need the OMI token, to be honest. Like, that's what I heard. Um, I mean, we're Again, not using tokens and, and they're doing it and they're selling NFTs. So if you were- She said, if you could do this again, would you just not use tokens? <laughs> like, that's crazy. Do this again. Would you incorporate tokens? Um, I mean, where, where we are, we probably will think a bit deeper how to, how, how the whole ecosystem or connected as one. Um, what well, well, we we probably won't be racing through uh, token side of things, and obviously part of that token creates a um, community as well. Um, we we basically have to live through what we have right now and adjust to it. And uh, and the the main reason is because the regulation. He said that's just stuck with the Omi token. Basically, what I just heard is they stuck with the Omi token, so they got to deal with it. Dang, bro. That's crazy. Just to it. And, uh, and the the main reason is because the regulation and the frustration when you do that, um, and depending on the jurisdiction you in, how they treat that token, um, it, it's pretty much on its business on its own. So if you were going to be raising money through token offering or crowdsourcing, versus just minting collectibles and having a fun and experience and test that market if that's what you want to get into you you could do it separately um and my advice is to seek very good independent um you know consultation with lawyers accounting firms to ensure that you are going down the right track and this is the best fit business model for you um, yeah so let me let me just um have you pause there because will you you are doing that business model, right? You're doing it without tokens. All right. So, uh, yeah, let's see. I mean, let, let's see what this yeah. is. What is, which one of these models would you lean toward for somebody new who's coming into this space and why? I think, you know, there's not a one size fits all, uh, can I answer here? I think there's, there's a hundred different ways to build a business and here in web three, there's a lot of different interesting angles that you can come at it with. Um, we did not, you know, launch with a fungible token. Um, there was a variety of reasons we, we chose to go that route, not to say that there's another route that's, that's not viable. I think there are a lot of viable paths. Um, but for us, you know, we really set out to build a platform that was really mindful of certain compliances right from the get-go, you know, as a, a company that's aspiring to be a digital toy company. And that's really how we see ourselves a digital toy company first. We don't see ourselves as an NFT company or a Web3 company. We use Web3 technologies. We use NFT technologies and blockchain, and we're very bullish on all, on all these techs. But predominantly, we're a digital toy company. And we want to provide great experiences that you can have with your digital toys. So for us, we went out with a certain approach that, hey, we really want to make this an all ages platform. Uh, we need in order to do that, we need to kind of comply to certain regulations and compliances. Uh, so there are things that we took from an approach perspective that's a little bit different compared to some of the other platforms out there. We didn't launch specifically with a marketplace. There's a lot of reasons for why we're, we did that, that marketplace is coming very soon, but you'll see in the way that we've built the, the marketplace features uh, that it provides a nice on-ramp 
not just for people over the age of 18, but for people under the age of 18 as well. And we just have to take a, a methodical approach to that. So launching with a fungible token right out of the gate wouldn't have been uh, necessarily the, the right approach for us. Not to say that it's not a good approach. I mean, it probably wasn't the right approach for VV either, but I don't know if they would have been able to fund it without it. Like, see, this is, this is the thing, man. The companies are learning from VV's mistakes and they're learning like by all the flaw, like, and this is the thing, VV did start in a way where it was like a very bad way to start, I think. And now they're fixing all those mistakes. Now they have all this on their plate. They have to worry about regulations for NFTs. They have to worry about regulations for, for crypto, which is two separate things. They have to worry about like just business, normal business stuff. Then working with all these licensors and all the rules and shit that goes with that. Yo, it's insane. And then they have a whole metaverse they're working on, bro. It's like, bro, their team, like, to do this effectively, they probably need a thousand person team. Like, I'll be honest with you. Because any of these things by themselves could be complicated. Like, they need a lot of people on this. And I don't think VV has that type of money to, to really have what they need. They started off trying to do every single thing, bro. Like, that's like starting a starting a restaurant chain straight out of the gate. You ain't even hired staff for all your businesses. Like, you just you just started a bunch of chains of restaurants, bro. Like, you don't even got people to work in them. Like, that, that's what they did. So now they got, like, one person in the crypto department. They got, like, one person in every department sitting here trying to do everything that needs to be done for the entire department. It wasn't the right approach for us. Um, so we focused on NFTs, digital collectibles, and then immediately went into how can we make this compliant for all ages so that it doesn't matter if you're 45 years old or you're eight years old, you can enjoy the Cryptoys experience in different ways. So uh, that, that was just our own uh, choice in that matter. Andrew, I know you probably, uh, before I ask my next question, you probably have a question here too. I want to give you the time. We have about five minutes here. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity to ask uh, about these two models as well. Got it. That makes sense. So you mentioned earlier, David, um, you know, go find uh, people you can trust, right? That will provide you with good advice. So for those out there that may be younger or they're an entrepreneur or they're trying to do that startup and they're trying to find the right advisor or the right person to trust, how do you know who the right person to trust is? Don't ask people no question like that. They don't. <laughs> no, don't you do it. Like, what you asking them that for, bro? Stop it. No. Like, what are... Uh, when it comes to this space, because I understand on the regulatory side, I've I've talked to founders that have spent literally millions trying to get clarity. They can't get clarity depending on the jurisdiction. It's been really frustrating for them. So how do you go select that maybe more senior person, that more experienced person, that person you can trust to advise you if you're looking to enter this space? What 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 advice would you give there to know that that person is trustworthy and their their advice is yeah. is advice that you should take? Based on what people are saying, like based on what I'm hearing here, this is why people kind of look at Vivi the way that they do. Vivi ch jumped in and was in over their head is what it sounds like. So if people are really spending millions and not being able to get advice, I know Vivi is cheap. Vivi is going about things in a cheap way and they've chosen the wrong people. We already know that. So it's like they do everything cheap and companies are spending millions and not being able to do it is, I mean, it, VV is moving very fast. Like they're, they're moving very fast. They, they've been trying to move way too fast and trying to do it all together at the exact same time. Like it's, I see, I see why VV is looked at how it's looked at. Like they, they do appear to me to be way in, way over their heads. Yeah, so um, num number one, the industry has moved uh, quite more clearly so, to be fair, it is impressive though. It's impressive that they're still up and kicking and, and doing relatively okay for the situation they've gotten themselves in. Because it was all mistakes early on that's led to them being where we are right now. So respect. Since 2017, when we first started, um, the, the there's a lot of project out there, a lot of founders that you can ask and seek advice on. And I think most of these you, you can go on the internet and learn a lot, you know, some of the failures, some, you know, some of the success, the, the right way to do it is to, you know, un understand number one is understand your product, what you're trying to achieve. Like we'll have say, uh, VV just wanted to be the trusted brand when it comes to premium digital collectibles, that's our focus. Um, we, we want the app to be mass market accessible. 
there's many elements in your business when you as a startup you you need to go back and think about the mechanic and what segment you want to carve out and what you're good at doing um so vv is not just about and ecomi is not just about the token and the digital collectible there's many elements in there there's the technology there's the ar there's the infrastructure there's the uh, licensing there's the brain that the, the whole business interconnect each other they're like a moving wheels so um from from down to advice in in regards to tokenizations uh, mechanic you you do want to go seek out there's many vc firms out there who has experience in investing investing in token side they they can give you some proper ideas of how you should structure these but going down to technology wise the ar the aspect of that um the the technology and ar is much more mature now we're moving into wearable device integration once again you will want advice and tech expert in that um you know part of what vv produces we, we produce premium so it's like basically vv's entire business model is getting advice and they've gotten mixed levels of advice they've gotten good advice and bad advice and then when you get bad advice you got to go back and Correct all the shit that went wrong because you had bad advice. So that's the risk that comes with what VV does. It comes down to the advisors that they choose and the the value that that advisor brings. If the if the value just is not there, is 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 bad, or you know, it's it could it could make VV look horrible. In three D collectible, so therefore the the graphic, the you know, behind it, the rendering. Uh, the design, you will need product manager who can eye over it because our users can see they want evolution of your product to get better and better. So there are many, many parts in, in that. And re really, a as a business structure, you want to attract that talent as well because when you, it's, it's very hard when you're a startup that you try to convince not just your partner or co-founder to join you on board, but the initial setup of the people that will want to work for you. I mean, some of these people are working for multinational company who can ha give you a stable um, commitment and try to lure them into the business as a startup and, and start over again can be very difficult. So you need experts in every single field. Um, and I quite often refer how we grow our business here at VV, you know, the one, seven, 17, 70, 300 rule. The, the initial- That's a lot of damn rules. What the hell? <laughs> Bro, this man just gave his social security. <laughs> this man just gave his social security number and said that's the rule he applied, bro. Like, damn. <laughs> like, bro, this is why VV so complicated, bro. Hey, what you on, bro? Hey, David is funny, bro. Hey, this man is hilarious. Quite often refer how we grow our business here at VV, you know, the one seven seventeen seventy three hundred rule. The the initial <laughs> startup as a founder and co-founder as the first employee in the company, moving into the seventh employee, the seventeen, the seventy and the three hundred beyond. People who take your business from zero to one million revenue as a small business and 1 million to 500 million as a medium-sized business and beyond to a multi-billion, they are going to be very different type of um, skills and talents involved. So finding the right profession in every segment, in every vertical in your business is very, very crucial. Uh this was actually bullish for me because <clears throat> it sounds like they, they're in over their heads. They made a lot of mistakes. A lot of stuff that they didn't expect was happening. But he knows exactly where he's trying to go and exactly how he wants to get there. It's just like they're in the middle of the storm and trying to figure out how to take the steps that they need to take. But it seems like he knows the steps that needs to be taken right now to get to where they're trying to go. That's what that just that that's what just, that just gave me. So that was actually pretty bullish to me. Uh, we're not just talking about tokenization regulations and what jurisdiction. We're talking about taxations. We're talking about HR. Uh, contractors, employment laws, um, and, and privacy data, and so on. There's many, many moving parts rather than just one specific section. In our so, David, so why me? Look at, look at all the stuff that he's breaking down, bro. Like, look at how much stuff is being broke down right now. This is insane. Like, this is really insane. And, and when he talks about all the rules and regulations behind everything, it's not just crypto. It's not just NFTs. 
even just in business itself, he's just bringing up stuff that's important that you can't overlook, especially when you're trying to get to certain sizes. And he knows exactly what it takes for the company at every single size and at every single stage. It's just trying to convince the right people to come on board right now. All the stuff that he's talking about. See, like he's really talking through the stuff that Vivi is going through right now. And it actually sheds light on it sheds light on why things are so difficult and complicated and going the way that they're going. But it still does not change my fact that they they communicate very horribly, but it does shed some light on why it's so complicated for, for Vivi. But, and it's still, like, you can call them footers, but it's still, like, somebody could potentially come and do a better job than Vivi because of how far they've gone doing it the wrong way and how many mistakes that they made early on. They have built what they have built on a foundation of, on an unstable foundation. If someone comes up, learns from Vivi and does all the right steps and builds on a proper foundation and then has a licensing expert that can secure a bunch of licenses, they could do it the right way from the start. And it's going to be a hell of a lot easier than Vivi trying to go back and fix everything and then move forward, you know? So yeah, um, but we're going to end it here, man. Like this was a lot, a lot. I didn't want the video to be this long, but yeah, it was a lot of info and you just couldn't really stop, man. So yeah, let me know what you all think. Um, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.